Patience is a part of any hobbyist's greatest projects. NASA's plan to fix Hubble was no exception. Hubble launched in 1990. It had to be serviced several times until 2009. With years of careful planning and patience, they were successful in traveling back and forth to complete repairs. It took 19 years for Hubble to be at its state as of now. No person has ever been successful in completing or continuing their projects without patience, and through those times, there are also failures. As lovers of space, we must continue on so that we can overcome our failures and triumph. Patience is the theme we want to portray for episode 5. Often, we are thwarted by uncontrollable forces and cannot pick up and go as we please. We appreciate your patience during this long hiatus and aim to regularly go out and hope that with the right conditions, the stars will align. After several months of cloud cover, moon shining or just bad timing, we are back to take on a new target. A whole new world, a whole new galaxy. And we are going back to our imaging spot, Nelson's Landing. We like to check our phones for updated weather reports and take a few pictures along the way. The drive to Nelson is a little long, but we amuse ourselves and sometimes see cool things. This particular drive is most exciting since it's the first time since last year that we'll be able to get back to our old stomping grounds. Welcome back to uh, Galactic Hunter, episode five. Um, we're back finally after two or three months of stupid skies and clouds and wind or whatever. That was terrible. Um, we're very, very happy to be back here at Nessa's Landing. So we, what we look for is good weather and honestly the weather's been so terrible. We are always looking for 0% clouds, good transparency, and obviously no moon because the glow would ruin our shots. And we're just so glad to be back here, honestly, like starting up, you know, new 2017. So this year, new year, new opportunities. So we're just going to go ahead and dive right in. We have gathered up your votes, and the winner for today's episode is another popular galaxy, M33, or the Triangulum Galaxy. So now that everything's pretty much set up, the only thing we have to do is have some patience and wait till the sun goes down. Waiting for the sun to set is the last opportunity we get to make sure everything is in place after it gets dark. The position of the car, all of our equipment, and most importantly, our food, so we can continuously check the telescope in the guiding, which we'll talk about later. Since it's been some time, we are exploring and looking at the changes in the desert. Not much of a difference, but it's definitely chilly. This is how you know your scope is balanced perfectly. Up the stairs. Oh. Good. Feels good to know that we can still balance on the first try like champs. We did notice that the sun is setting more to the south than it had been in the summer. Pretty neat when thinking about the Earth's rotation on its axis in different seasons. So right now I'm doing the three-star alignment, which is kind of annoying. Um, 
So I have to make sure the three stars are perfectly aligned. Okay, so I can see a star, which is good. So I'm making sure it's centered. Using the arrows. Okay. So now the alignment is done, which means I can use all the targets in this one automatically. So M33 is pretty bright, just like Andromeda. So we're gonna use ISO 800, and we would use ISO 1600 if it would be like a very very dim target. But for M33, um, that's perfectly fine. We'll talk about settings in depth maybe later, uh, we'll see. We'll also do a 6 minute exposure, uh, which is what I prefer. I usually do like either 3 or 6, but 6 is pretty good for very faint details. So we'll go ahead and do 6 minute exposures. And uh, yeah. Like the Andromeda Galaxy, the Triangulum Galaxy is visible with the naked eye in extremely dark skies far from any light pollution. It is easily visible with any binoculars or telescope. As we explained in episode 4, the Andromeda Galaxy is doomed to crash with our own, the Milky Way. M33's fate is no better. The Triangulum Galaxy will get stuck in the gravitational pull of the impact, and orbit the new Milkometer Galaxy until finally crashing into it. In the end, our Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy, and the Triangulum Galaxy will become one. So we just launched the camera to start taking all the images, and we just decided to film on the opposite side of it so we don't bother the camera with the flashlight, and we're just gonna wait now. Here is a single shot that we took. As you can see, it's pretty good. That's why we didn't waste too much time, because our signal shot was pretty good already. Now, our tracking is also pretty pretty good. I will show you the tracking right now. This is the tracking. The more straight the line is, the better it is. All the spikes you see are when the guiding camera tells the mount that, that it messed up, it so to it's fix correcting it. Itself. Yes. The flatter the line, the better. Time to have a lot of patience and wait. We'll see what to do. Yep. Now that we've done our part, we'll let the camera and guiding do theirs. Patience is definitely key when waiting for our imaging to finish. Ever wonder what happens behind the scenes during that time? We sometimes bring games to play while our telescope is busy with the stars. Card games are not the best to play in the car, but it is still fun. We also eat, most of the time, homemade sandwiches, but sometimes we get a burger on the way. In between, we also simply watch the stars slowly drifting above us. And when it's too cold, we bring movies to watch on our smartphones and pass the time. We won't lie. At some point, it really does get boring. So now we have finished uh, imaging. Our battery is now dead. So we're just gonna pack up and go home because it's freezing outside tonight. Let's go. I cannot wait for, for summer. Uh, right now it's really really cold. We have hand warmers in the back of the car, but uh, it's so really cold still. Let's go on right now. Let's go. Okay, we are back home. Uh, time to edit uh, the pictures. I already took care of it uh, last night, but I'm gonna go um, through them with you because many of you asked me. <laughs> So many of you asked um, how we do the processing. I tried to record my screen when I was doing it, but it takes like two hours sometimes, and I couldn't do it. It was too, um, not really cheap, but too, too laggy, rammy, yeah. So next time we'll try maybe to put this camera uh, behind me and the computer, so you could see uh, much better. But the screen itself didn't work today, so I just took screenshots of each step. Okay, so let's start. 
Oh yeah, by the way, I got my hair, as you can see. After I saw my weird hairstyle in a, uh, those 15 best spring targets. So this first picture you can see here, this was right after I did the background extraction. So I started taking screenshots right after that. Next you have to make a star mask. So I used a histogram transformation to do a star mask. And the reason why I'm doing this mask is so I can do the noise reduction. At this point you have to invert the mask so the galaxy and the star are not being touched. And you can do the noise reduction. So all the background behind the galaxy and, and the stars, the noise will be way better. Then I think I kept the mask for the stars and made a deconvolution. So what it does is it just makes the big stars become a little bit smaller so it's not too eye-catching. Then I did a background neutralization as well as a color calibration and that's very important to do. It's one of the things you have to really do, you have no choice. Actually right now it's, you can see the difference so it's much better. The background behind is more black and more natural and the galaxy is less less bright and less green as well. So this was the linear part. There's two parts, linear and non-linear. You can check it out online if you want to know what it means. So without the stretch it looks all black almost. That's what happens when you switch to non-linear. But then you have to use a histogram transformation to bring back all the details. Then we use SCNR to take all the green out, unless you're sure that it's green in this galaxy. But it's done that it's just blue, red and, and pretty much it. Yeah, blue and red. So take all the green out. And then we do another star mask. So the stars are going to be reduced in size with the morphological transformation. It's going to make the galaxy itself pop more. Then we have curves. I do the curves once in a while just to check on it. Same for the histogram transformation for how dark the background is and, and all that. After that, we do another mask with the ACDNR for the noise reduction as well. And then the last steps are going to be saturation. So this is before saturation. Use uh, the curves to find the right balance of colors uh, depending on how, what color is your galaxy. And this is after the saturation. And that's pretty much done. That was a very, very basic workflow. But since it's a very bright and big close by galaxy, this one works perfectly fine. Any questions? Wow. <laughs> Not really a question, but wow. Remember what our single shot looked like? Well, we now present to you the final image of M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. The famous LEO triplet consists of two Messier galaxies, M65 and M66, so we could add two targets to our catalog. This is not a difficult target, but we would have to be very careful during the editing process to bring up the details for each galaxy at the same time. The Sombrero Galaxy. The main challenge with this one will also be during editing. This galaxy emits a lot of light from its core, so we'll have to be very delicate in order to not burn the background of the galaxy itself. Like the Earth, the planets in the solar system are constantly orbiting our sun. You've probably already seen several of them when looking up at the night sky, but do not realize what they actually are. 
By getting closer to one of these bright stars, we may discover that it is actually a planet. Alright guys, at this point episode 5, um, we hope you liked it. I can't wait to see what you're going to choose for episode 6. We're going to continue trying to get out there as much as we can. And it's just been really eventful to just come back out and start filming. And just like we explained in episode 2, we're just going to continue braving the elements. And right now it's really chilly where we are now, so we're, gonna, we're just going to keep doing it. We're going to get out some more videos. And uh, don't visit to once again visit our website galactic-hunter.com where you can see all our targets in the mystery catalog and everything else. Alright, see you next time.